comes to us from uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians is in the New Testament. It's in the back part of your Bible. Um, months ago, we learned uh, how to find that. We did General Electric Power Company. Do you remember doing that with me? So Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, General Electric Power Company. So if you flip to the back and you see one of those, you can go backwards or forwards until you land on Ephesians. This is Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. You can follow along in your Bibles. You can follow along in, um, uh, in the bulletin, as well as maybe you just need to take a deep breath and focus on the cross or the candles on the altar today to hear these words. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 11 and going through verse 22. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hospitality. Hmm, I did that the first service. That hostility through it. I want to say hospitality so badly. If you ever hear hospitality today, it's hostility. That's what I mean. We're just going to go with it, right? All right, so uh, we'll go back a little bit. Um, uh, reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. All scripture is inspired by God. Thanks be to God. In my household growing up, there were really just three of us. There was my mama and my little brother and myself. And I am three years older than my little brother. And I have seen that the kind of relationship that my brother and I had also is lived out with sisters. Uh, I imagine it's also brother to brother. The sibling relationships that we had together were... Um, well, ho hostile. <laughs> there is a story that my mama sometimes tells about the time where I tied my brother up to a tree and he was there when she came home from work. Now, in my defense, <laughs> he wanted to be Superman and he asked to be tied to that tree. What we don't know is how long it was before my mama got home. <laughs> my little brother was also a biter. And he bit me so much that my mama said, I could, if he bit me, I could bite him back. And so I did, and I made sure he would never do it again with the kind of bite <laughs> that I left. There were times where he would get mad at me and he would lock himself in his room. And then I got a screwdriver and I just took off the doorknob. <laughs> There's plenty of hostility between us. We fought a lot as children. But I'll tell you, if anybody ever said a word or made a move against my little brother, I was his first defender. And he has been mine. I protected him in any instance that even slightly required it. 
And he has done the same for me in our adult life. And as we grew, our hostile relationship turned to love. Not just sometimes. Not just when somebody's being mean to him. But always. And so as I read today's scripture passage about how the Gentiles and the Jews became the church united, that word that I cannot say apparently today uh, is what stuck out at me, that hostility. It stuck out because there's this idea in that passage that Jesus has broken down the hostility between the Gentiles and the Jews. He made both of those groups, Gentiles and Jews, those who were far off and those who were near, into one. And as much hostility as my brother and I experience, the, the uniting that we have had as grown-ups has been good for us and beautiful for our family. And that is the kind of thing that our scripture lesson tells us that Jesus has done. He has broken down the dividing walls. And the scripture says that the dividing wall was the hostility between us. The dividing wall was not the thing that makes us different. It's not our ideas, not our thoughts, how we look, how we are. That was not the dividing wall. But the dividing wall is the hostility between us. In this scripture lesson, we we read this. It says, "For for Christ Jesus is our peace. He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, making peace and reconciling both groups to God, putting to death hostility through it. And he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to you who were near. Jesus came to break down the dividing walls between people and the dividing wall was the hostility that was among them. And I read that and I thought, this is, this is beautiful that Jesus has broken down the hostility between us. And then I, I read the scripture again and I saw that it says, has been broken. That's, it's past tense. It means it's, it's already happened. But what about today? What about the hostility between us now? So friends, yesterday's events show us that there is still hostility There's hostility when we don't like a political candidate. There's hostility when we don't like the results of an election. Hostility when we disagree on an interpretation of Scripture. Hostility when our team loses. Or hostility just when we're driving down the highway and somebody makes a a poor driving decision in front of us. We are a hostile people. And it seems to divide us even more today. It divides our church, it divides our country, it divides our families. And the scripture says that Jesus has broken down the walls. And yet here we sit today with dividing walls among us and hostility between us. Recently retired Presbyterian minister, Reverend Karen Chacoan, writes this about um, this passage of scripture and uh, about this moment of um, past tense verb. She says, the irony of our time is that so many battles are being fought between those who think their rivals are godless. The mudslinging has not ended. All the past tense of the verbs in this passage affirms an already accomplished fact. The reality of our world stands against the peaceful images in painful juxtaposition. She says the hard truth is there is no peace. Unity, whether in the church or in the world, seems to exist only in our dreams. 
The Jews of Jesus' day thought that the Gentiles were godless and vile. And there was hostility between the groups because they ate differently and they acted differently and they were different. And they saw each other as vile. And the one group saw the other as godless and vile. And isn't that how we see the people who disagree with us today? who believe differently than us, who think differently than us, who read scripture differently than us, who vote differently than us. We see them as godless and vile because we are right and they are wrong, and so they must be godless and vile. Now, don't think too hard about people you're sitting around right now. (laughs) Half of us are godless and vile, and the other half are right. And then the other half are right, (laughs) right? But with the early church, Jesus intervened and put an end to the hospitality. See, I did it again. Woo. You see, a preacher wants to preach on hospitality, not hostility. And that is just where my brain and my heart want to go. <laughs> Jesus intervened and put an end to the hostility between them to make peace and to reconcile both groups back to God. Jesus broke down those dividing walls and he made something new. They were no longer a people far away and a people nearby, but they were a new humanity together. But I don't don't believe that that was God's plan only for the people of the first century. Our scriptures are are living within us today and they tell us what God can do, not just sometime in the past, but still today. And last week we read the opening of Ephesians in chapter 1 and we read about um, God's plan. A plan for the fullness of time. This is God's plan for the fullness of time to gather up all all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, all of them, not just the things and the people of the first century, but all things for the fullness of time to be gathered to God. Scripture tells us that God's plan is to gather us all in. All, and all doesn't just mean the people of the first century or or the people even in this room, but all are including the people that we disagree with, the people that we don't like, the people that we see as godless and vile. They are all part of God's plan to gather us all in. And we know that not just from this scripture, but scripture also tells us that God did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but to save the world, the whole world, all. Not just parts of the world, But the whole thing, even the parts that we would deem godless and vile, Jesus came to save all. And then scripture tells us that our hostility will end through Jesus. Our scripture tells us that we will be reconciled to God through Christ and a new humanity will form making peace. No more hostility, no more seeing the other as godless and vile, but a new humanity made of peace where we look at one another and we see each other as beloved children of God. And scripture even tells us that it is possible because all things, all things are possible with God. Now what I know about humanity and even the early church is that Jesus didn't just come and break down the dividing walls by opening his arms up and saying, we're done. But the early church didn't immediately lay down their uh, mm, their hostility. (laughs) They had to work to see the other as the beloved child of God. And there is a lot of work that we have to do in our church and in our country to help Jesus break down those dividing walls of hostility. 
The early church had to work through the things that people disagreed with. The things that they ate that were different from the other things that other people ate and the way that they interacted and the way that their children were born and how they were with each other. Those are the things that brought in hostility. And by listening to the stories of Jesus Christ and believing that Jesus Christ had the power to change them, he was able to break down those dividing walls and the hostility ceased for them. But they had to do some work first. The letter writer to the Ephesians leaves that part out. There's a lot of stuff that they like to put in there, a lot of words. I find Ephesians one of the harder books of the Bible to read because they like the words. But that part was there. They had to do the work and allow Jesus to work within them. And that's the same for us today, even though hostility still is between us today, dividing us one from another and another, Jesus calls us to do the work that we have a role in this possibility. And our role starts in prayer. It starts with us offering ourselves to God and for God to use us and to move within us and to make us into the people that God calls us to be. So then we can go out and go and do and bring about peace and try to end hostility amongst us. Yesterday is um, my clergy colleagues across the country were trying to share their thoughts on social media Over and over and over again, I saw the prayer of St. Francis. And it is a beautiful prayer for us to pray as we begin our work to break down dividing walls. And so I invite you to take out a hymnal. And we're going to turn to page 481. And together we are going to pray this prayer of St. Francis. All right, friends, let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Friends, it is part of our call as Christ followers to help God bring unity, to bring about peace, to be instruments of peace, to sow love and light in this world, to do justice and resist evil. That's part of our baptismal vows that we commit to doing justice and resisting evil and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We are called to do this work to break down the walls of hostility to work toward restoration and reconciliation. And I know that this is hard because I know who I am. Because I know that sometimes it is easier to tie somebody up to a tree and just walk away (laughs) than to try to bring about peace. to try to be one in Christ, united with each other, to do the work as the children and I did earlier. But God calls us to unity in Christ Jesus, and that unity is one that breaks down these walls of hostility and brings about peace. Because you and I are called to be peacemakers and peace bringers. And sometimes in this world, it's a whole lot easier to try to bring peace than to make it. Because you may not be able to make peace with one another, but you can certainly bring peace to a situation. 
We are called to do this work, to, to be part of this possibility of unity in Christ Jesus who breaks down the dividing walls of hostility among us. And we have seen over and over and over again what hostility can do. People die. Churches split. Everybody's hurt. But Jesus can break down these walls of, hospi of hostility, and then maybe we'll be hospitable. <laughs> but you know, there is this work of reconciliation and, and justice that we are called to do. Because I know that Jesus will do it, but I believe it can come a lot sooner if you and I can help. If we will lay down our hostility, if we will take up peace, if we will see each other not as godless and vile, but as beloved children of God. One of the foremost thinkers and workers for justice and reconciliation was the Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And in writing about um, the work that he did in South Africa, he says this, God saw our brokenness and sought to extricate us from it but only with our cooperation. God will not cajole or bully us, but wants to woo us for our own sakes. We might say that the Bible is the story of God's attempt to effect atonement, to bring us back to our intended condition of relatedness. He says God was in Christ reconciling the world to God. God sent Jesus who would fling out his arms on the cross as if to embrace us. He says, God wants to draw us back into an intimate relationship and so bring to unity all that has become disunited. This was God's intention from the very beginning. And each of us is called to be an ally of God in this work of justice and reconciliation. Friends, we are called to be one in Jesus Christ, to, to work together for Jesus, to see each other as beloved children of God, to put away our hostility and anger, and to quit seeing each other as godless and vile. We are called to be peace bringers in this world. So may it be so. Amen.